Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and remember, context is everything. Media Network founder and CEO John Michael is reading a book cover to cover. This is Dissolving the Ego and Realizing the Self. We're on Chapter 8, Section 2 of this book. The section is titled Realizing the Self, and the chapter is titled Nature of Divinity, Self, and Truth. We're about a third of the way through. Here goes 20-ish tidbits of wisdom about the nature of divinity, the self, and the truth. It's all about dissolving the ego, folks. God is the absolute subjectivity that underlies existence and the capacity for awareness. God is beyond all time, place, or human characteristics. In contrast, the ego... The ego's perception of God, the absolute reality of the self, and the manifestation of God as the very core of one's existence. The love of the presence is ultra-personal and experienced as infinite peace, infinite security, and the safety of foreverness, so that there is no imaginary end to fear. The God of the presence imbues the joy of completion love is not a not a not a quality of god but god's every essence <clears throat> for the one linguistically considers god to be called rama brahma or allah it really is irrelevant god is not limited by any positionality or ascribable ascribable quality Likewise, God is not subject to the duality of either or, which would have to be the basis of any favoritism. The true self is inevi- invisible and has no characteristics by which it can be judged. It has no describable qualities, nor can it be the subject of any adjectives at all. The self merely is and is beyond verbs, adverbs, and adjectives. It does not even do anything. The love of God is absolute and unconditional. The sky does not be for some people. And the sky does not be for some people and not be for others. Nor does the s- okay. The sky does not be for others for some people and not be for others. Nor does the sun shine on only a select few who have been arbitrarily chosen. God is complete and total. Realization is not a gain or an accomplishment, nor is it something that is given as a reward for being good. These are all notions from childhood. God is immutable and cannot be manipulated into granting favors or seduced by bargaining or adulation. Worship benefits the worshiper by reinforcing commitment and inspiration. God is still silent and unmoving. To know that the self is context and that, in contrast, the self is content is already a huge leap forward. The naive seeker merely keeps reshuffling the content. The source of all that exists is divinity. Thus, all that exists is already perfect. Without that perfection, nothing could exist. From the viewpoint of enlightenment, one might say that the linear is observed from the context of the nonlinear. To put it differently, existence is the manifestation of divinity as form in and of itself. The universe is therefore harmless. The viewpoint from enlightenment transcends the experiencer, the observer, the witness, and even awareness itself. Truth is strength as an expression of integrity. The constant awareness of one's existence as I 
is the ever-present expression of the innate divinity of the self. It is universal, constant experience that is purely subjective and which no proof is possible or necessary. The eye of the self is the expression of divinity as awareness, which is therefore beyond time and form. The truth of this identity is obscured by the duality created by perception and disappears when all positionalities are relinquished. The self is not conditional. It has no qualities and is not dependent on or explicable. The self has no duration, beginning or endings, location, form, and limit or limitations. The radiance of the self that illuminates existence without which there would be no awareness. The self is beyond process. All descriptions are inappropriate and inapplicable to the self. The love and power of God are one in the same. God can only be known and not proven. Beyond subjectivity, no world exists. Without the presence of God, nothing can, could be known or experienced, even including one's own existence. Existence is subjectivity, as subjectivity is complete, total, and whole. It is also the very basis of joy. The self is the presence of source of existence as the infinite I. The spontaneity of life is an expression of its essence, interacting effortlessly. The miracle of creation is continuous, and all life shares in the divinity of its source, for nothing comes into existence except by divine ordinance. Once the scaredness of life is revealed, there follows the knowingness of what is meant by the phrase gloria in excess deo. The concept of God doing battle with the forces of evil is an impossibility created by guilt-ridden fearful fantasies. In reality, there is no possible threat to heaven or to God or to uh, the purity of absolute reality. The real exists and the unreal does not. The real is not threatened by the unreal. Life itself is not subject to secession, but only to change of form. The source and essence of life is God, who is not subject to demise. One can l lose one's source. Death is the end of one chapter of a series of stories that finally cease only when the ego author surrenders to its source. The self is like one's inner grandmother who watches over the ch a child so he does not forget to take his raincoat or mail the rent check. God is not om uh, God is not ominous but loving. Fear arises and ima from the imagination. The presence of the self is complete, permanent, and totally fulfilling. It has no needs. Everything occurs spontaneously as an expression of its intrinsic essence. There is nothing and no one to cause anything to happen. The infinite supreme is the same for all mankind throughout time. The God of all human and religion is one and the same and transcends all tribal gods of old. God is both transcendent, uh, imminent, both in heaven and within us. The realized self is knowingness of God. Um, the realization of self is knowingness of God uh, imminent, which is in accord with Christ's teachings, that heaven is within us. The infinite timeless reality has also been historically referenced, uh, referred to as Buddha nature, Christ consciousness, the supreme of Krishna, and so on. 
Truth stands revealed on its own without proclamation or need for aggrandizement. Its absolute sovereignty shines forth without need of acclaim or praise. Self is beyond, yet innate in all form timelines, within beginning or end, changeless, permanent, or immortal. Out of it arises awareness, consciousness, and the, an infinite condition of at-homeness. It is the ultimate subjectivity from which everyone sens everyone's sense of I arises. The infinite reality does not even know itself as I, but as the very substitute for the capacity of for which such a statement. It is in invisible and all-present. The source of the self is the reality of divinity. Although it is the source of existence, it is not subject to it, nor is such a term applicable. The innate qualities of divinity are mercy and compassion. There are no favor there are no favors to be sought. It is only necessary to accept that which already exists as a given. Divinity is without parts or division. All that is truly of God brings peace, harmony, and love, and is devoid of all forms of negativity. Spiritually aware persons realize that they can only carry the message, for it is the inner truth that is the teacher. The presence of the s as self illuminates the allness of reality. Everything is equal by virtue of the divinity of its existence as the infinite supreme out of which all existence and creation arise. There is no selectivity or division. All is of equal value and importance. The purity of divinity is beyond comprehension by the ego because the ego is limited by form and always assumes a duality of subject and object. The universe is self-creating spontaneously. Nothing is causing it to express itself. The unmanifest of the Godhead is the infinite potentiality of infinite context and all possibility. The universe is spontaneously autonomous. Even the thought of existence is merely a notion. God is the universal I-ness of manifestation. Behind even the universal I-ness of God is the supreme as the unmanifest, which is unnameable. Because the essence of God is the catalyst of creation, all that is created contains that same quality. Therefore, the ultimate context of God is the infinite progression of infinite potentialities and the possibilities, which, each of which then creates further infinite progression of infinite progressions. Although not really satisfactory, the explanation is the view from the perspective of the self as one with the Creator. The self knows, by virtue of its essence, all that exists beyond time and therefore beyond memory. The God, glory of God shines forth as the source of existence, as well as the reality that is knowable by the subjective awareness of the self as the infinite I. The infinite context of all that exists of all possibility is obviously God. The possibility of the transformation from potentiality to actuality is provided by the infinite power of the primordial substrate of all existence, which alone has the power to transform the unmanifest into the realm of the manifest. Unity and oneness, everything is simultaneously intrinsic and everything else but not by virtue of being either the same or else. Within the infinite context of allness, potentiality is activated by divine ordinance, commonly known as God's will. The term will is, however, somewhat misleading. 
in that it implies violation. Creation is witnessed as the unfolding of revelation, of the emergence of infinite potentiality as creation. Thus there is no duality of this creator creating that creation. For creator and creation are one and the same. Truth and reality are identical and eternally present, merely awaiting discovery. It is not possible to arrive at truth and ignorance, ignore consciousness, because truth is the very product of consciousness. The presence of the self constitutes the class, the classic purusha, or radiance of the self, as a source. Self knows by virtue of identity with divinity. It, uh, self knows by virtue of identity with divinity itself. It thereby is its own awareness. By its presence, it thereby makes itself known as the knower. Thus, it does not know about, but is, com but is the completion of its own essence. Divinity knows its own, therefore, to, to accept the truth is already to feel joy. To not experience joy by understanding this means that it is being resisted. Enlightenment is not a condition to be obtained. It is merely a certainty to be surrendered to, for the self is already one's reality. It is the self that is attracting one to spiritual information. And that's a good spot to end today. I hope you have a lovely day. God bless. Goodbye. Please subscribe if you made it this far. Context is everything. Media Network.